Come on in, come on in. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. <laughs> welcome back. Let's kick this off. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Branding like a boss with Elizabeth Lorenzana. Let's see. I went ahead and did it, sis. Yay. 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 We did it. Okay. We did it. Did it load up? I'm not seeing you on the camera. Uh oh. Uh, I'm seeing myself on the camera. You do? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, as long as you see yourself, I guess it'll, like, change. I can't see you, but I can. That is so crazy. I, love, I don't know. Love it. I love it. I love it. Let me see if I do something. Did you see the camera change? I can, I only see myself. <laughs> Are you there? Yay, you see both of us. Awesome. Okay, let me see, because Elizabeth, it kicked her off. Oh, no, I, I invited the wrong one. Sis, are you there? Good morning. There you are. Well, hello. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I am good. Do not look at my bags. I went to sleep super late last night. Oh, girl. So I'm like, praise God for filters. <laughs> I don't have one here. Let me put one on for me. Oh, not by the time no, I find it. I love it. I, uh, I woke up this morning and I was like, okay, Hold on. Oh, there I am. Okay. So I woke up this morning and I was like, let me have some coffee. And I go to make coffee and I'm out of coffee. And I was like, no, this, this is not how it's going to be today. <laughs> I know. So I, thank you for doing this. I'm really excited. I'm excited to see what unfolds. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for inviting me. Absolutely. I'm happy to be Absolutely. here. Absolutely. Yeah. So everyone, this is Elizabeth Lorenzana. And she is the leader of the LAB Leadership Society, which is her basically, is it your signature, not your signature program, but it is it is your signature mm -hmm. program, right? Yeah, it's, it's her amazing. signature. Yeah, exactly. So it's her, okay. So it's her signature program that she's created for Boss Lady Empire Academy, okay? And what she does is basically walks you, helps you brand like a boss, okay? And not one of those, um, I'm just going to be in it to make money or I'm just going to, you know, start this business and there's no plan, right? Um, a little bit of background about um, how I got started in doing this was I had a vision and I started to write the vision and make it plain. I didn't know what branding was. This is before I met Elizabeth, right? I had no idea what branding was. I had no idea what any of that was. All I know is that I basically got a set of instructions and the Lord was using me to basically, it was, he was using it to work out like my obedience, right? And to be obedient. And so from that, I, hi sis, I began doing a podcast. I wrote a story. I created a coaching program. Um, I created a mentorship area. I created all of these different things. And the reason why this happened is, oh, it puts you live on your, not on your leadership page, but on the beauty glam. That is so funny. But anyways, so I, <laughs> wow. I have no idea. I have no idea. But anyways, Oh, well, we roll with it. So anyways, I started the process and I started doing things. And then I met Elizabeth and we met on social media and she was posting on social. We had um, some similar friends and I was like, well, OK, I've never seen her before, like in person or anything. Long story short. Good morning. Long story short. We ended up God ended up connecting us. She lives in the same state, same city, and like seven minutes away from each other. 
Okay, I'm frozen. Sis, can you hear me? I can see you. Yeah. It's like laggy. Are you on Wi Fi or 5G? The devil is a liar. Yes, he is. In Jesus' name. Is that better? So, so, so faithfully, Allie, faithfully, Allie says that she can see us both and that there's no leg. Okay. Okay. So that is essentially how we met. And ever since then, we've been talking, building a relationship, a friendship, a sisterhood. And we partnered in with two other of our friends in working through what we are doing called the builder's roadmap and so today is kind of like that nehemiah's on the wall where there's warfare and there's inner healing and then there's also building right because that's my testimony i would do the inner healing and i would get the process and i would start going and there would be warfare and i would grow and then i would get clarity and strategy and confidence to go write the book or to go launch the podcast. And it wasn't done overnight. It was like a, a seven month plan of building and walking these out and learning new skills and doing that. And so I'm honored to say that I've partnered and collabed with Elizabeth because she brings material knowledge and strategy that we didn't necessarily have when we first started. Right, Liz? Right. Like, <laughs> so it was rough. For the first, yeah, the first question I want to ask you is how have you simplified branding for the newbie? How have you simplified branding for the newbie? How have I simplified branding for the new, like for the new entrepreneur? Mm -hmm. So the way that I like to approach personal branding is that you, the answer is already within you right they're already within you because you are the personal brand right so there's nothing outside of you that you really need to go and get right and i think that that's when our personal branding gets really confusing is when we start to look outside of us right and so the way that i like to approach it is by asking really in-depth personal questions for my clients right and really partnering with the vision that they see that god has already given them right because a lot of times it's a matter of god has put this vision in your mind he has put this vision in your heart he has given you these ideas but because a lot of times we feel that lack of competence or a lot of times we feel like um you know i'm not ready or mm -hmm. Sometimes the vision that God gives us is too big for us to even be able to comprehend because mm. of the stage of leadership that we're in, right? But the answers are really inside of us, right? And so I like to, and it's personal branding is really like peeling off the layers, right? It's like mm. an onion, right? It's like you peel off the first layer, we ask the question, right? And then we go in deeper, right? Because as we're doing the personal branding, we start to unveil, right, and really, like, partner with God and say, okay, God, you've given me this idea, you've given me this approach, you've given me whatever it is, right? Um, now let me unlayer it, right? And it's really about getting active, right, and taking the action to say, okay, God, you've given me this idea, you've given me this vision, now I'm going to work towards it, right? And in my own experience, that has been so honorable to God mm. that I have seen because the simple fact that you get active, the simple fact, you know, that you are, you know, working this vision and this idea that he's given you, he starts to really unravel, right? So people make personal branding super complicated because we start to think about, oh my gosh, what colors am I going to use that match? <laughs> Oh my gosh, like, does this, do these letters match this color or this aesthetic, right? And yeah. all of those things are like the extra stuff, right? It's like the cherry on top, right? Gotcha. But in reality, it's really internal, 
Right. And so what I tell my clients is do not overcomplicate this, right? Do not start to look at other people because your personal brand is your personal brand and it's oh. inside of you already. It's just a matter of bringing it out to life, right? Partnering with God and the Holy Spirit, and then it'll continue to unlayer, right? And, and so um, I think that's the simplicity of personal branding. And because we are faith-based, God is good to partner with us and to really, um, you know, start to really unlayer those things and give us more clarity and more vision because we are partnering with him. I love so that. So that's the simplicity. Uh, I love of that I love that so in in that can you because you gave us kind of a an overview of why you started essentially but can you introduce yourself in the sense of why you're able to do this um so I really believe that leadership and personal branding are tied right and I had a really big defining moment one time that I was driving that God basically, it was, it happened twice, right? One of the times was I was cleaning my house. I was cleaning the pantry and it's always when we're cleaning, huh? Yeah. I mean, that's our life, right? Uh, but I was cleaning the pantry and um, all of a sudden I got this idea, right? And I remembered how my parents were always telling me, to take care of my testimony. They were always telling me, Miha, like, you know, uh, be who you say you are, be careful the way you dress, be careful the way you speak. And I never really understood that when I was young, right? Mm -hmm. But then as I got older and I started to get into business, right? Um, I realized like, wow, all this time, and it's for, this is for, for everybody. Since we start, to lead in any aspect of our life, in any aspect of our life, whether it's at church, whether it's at home, wherever it is, we start to build a personal brand without even knowing. Yes. We start to, we already have a personal brand. Our personal brand is our testimony. It's the way we position ourselves. It's the way that we talk. It's the way that we stay consistent. It's the way that we're disciplined and people see that consistency, right? And so as I'm cleaning my pantry, you know, God really tells me like, like you've been doing it all this time. You've been wow. doing it all this time. And then business comes into mind and I'm like, oh my gosh, like, like this is why it's important because when I was a child, I couldn't see my future. I couldn't see the plans that God had for me, but mm -hmm. I got an entrepreneur entrepreneurship and I was like this is why right and so when I got into entrepreneurship right I wouldn't say that I was popular and viral and all of this mm -hmm. but I, what I do know is that people already had uh, an image of me people already had an idea of me because I always remained and I'm trying to remain humble authentic real right <clears throat> and so as i'm driving as well the same thing happened right i you know i, I years passed and really like sometimes we lose the vision that god has given us and i'm driving and then all of a sudden personal branding comes again right mm -hmm. and by this time i'm already um into the leadership aspect right i'm already into the leadership aspect you know um and then like I started to connect and I'm like, wow, leadership is really part of personal branding. Right. Yes. And so that was kind of my experience of God, of how God, um, you know, I know there's like, like the leadership, the personal branding. Um, and sometimes we separate the two. Mm. Right. Explain sometimes. how we, why we separate. Can you explain right there? Cause I think you're in a great spot of why we separate. Mm -hmm. Why do you think I, we I, separate I, them? I think that a lot of times we don't really understand what personal branding is because there's two types of branding, right? Like there's the business branding, right? The business branding as to, you know, the corporate, like 
for me, I'm my brand, but I also have Boss Lady Empire Academy. Mm -hmm. And there's people that when they have such names, right, um, they focus more on building the company than they focus on themselves, uh. right, which is great. Right. Like for me, for LAB Leadership Society, it's great because I do want people to know what LAB Leadership Society stands for. Amen. But it doesn't stand for it by its own. It stands for it because of me, because of who I am, because of my morals. Right. If Amen. I wouldn't have morals or anything like that, then what would it stand for? Right. Like I'm the representation of Boss Lady Empire Academy. And so I think mm -hmm. that's where people get really confused right gotcha. and, uh, and i also think like lack of responsibility right it's lack of responsibility sometimes as faith-based entrepreneurs we're afraid of the weight that our name can carry because our name does it, it, carries, it carries weight yeah it carries weight and this is actually something that i have been going through now that i got out of like that really funky stage of my life is that i was praying and I tell God, gosh, I feel so oppressed. Like, I feel so heavy. And God was like, you feel heavy like that because you feel the responsibility of your name. Wow. Because your name carries something heavy, and it's me. Right? So your name, how you position yourself out there. Right? When people think about Elizabeth Lorenzana, they need to think about me. Amen right and so i think that as leaders sometimes we're afraid of that we're afraid wow. to say hey, i'm a leader right because we're afraid to fail we're afraid for people to look at us more than what they look at jesus right mm. but that's also a part of your personal brand if you call in your personal ba brand being super religious being super perfect not sharing your vulnerable moments not sharing hey like i'm a human too then people are going to expect that right yeah. but whenever that's you share hey, this is like, this is my story. My Amen. story is glory, right? And when you're able to share that vulnerability and people are used to seeing you at the high, but they're also used to seeing you at the low, you know <laughs> that that's not going to affect you, right? Yeah. Because you've been honest through your personal brand, through how you've shared yourself, through how you, how you have positioned yourself, you have shared that and you've built a reputation of resistance resilience determination and when people see you down they don't criticize you. they better be ready for the come up <laughs> yeah like they're waiting right because like, a righteous man waiting. falls seven times and gets back up yeah. in the name of jesus <laughs> like when i was going through my through my funk of i, I don't even like to call it depression anymore because i don't even own that anymore but most people did but it's it's really a form it's oppression a lot yeah. of people when we i think and i agree with you with saying that i don't mean to cut you off but yeah. it's not we naturally the enemy is going to oppress us yeah. but when we don't know spiritual warfare or we're not raised in that we look at it as depression because we allow the world to label things of the world yeah. depression is a form of worldly things and if we look at elijah biblically the way that he struggled was mostly because of the mantle and the things that he carried. Moses struggled. They were both the ones in the Bible that were raptured. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, Moses and Elijah, Moses and Elijah were also the ones where Jesus took Peter, James, and John up to the mountain and told them those were his three. And I want to interject that, like, who are your three? Because, and I want to talk about personal relationships, if you don't mind, um, Elizabeth, because one of the things that um, Shanice put on here in the question, she said, so you can get lost in building the brand and lose your personal branding. So you can get, get lost in building the brand, building the business and lose your personal branding. Yeah. Wow. That's pretty powerful. That is a powerful, and that's absolutely true. And the reason I, I, from that question that she has, I wanted to segue into the relationships of branding, personal branding and things. And here's why, because I think you do this so naturally, so authentically, especially just being, just being real raw and relatable, but always leading through your authentic self mm -hmm. is, you know, when Peter, James and John went up with Jesus and he took them, I always say like, who's your three, right? 
who are the three that you can truly be real, raw, and relatable, and those people are going to intercede for you. Now, let me give you an example of the intercession that the Holy Spirit gave me while I was walking these things out, right? Was he took them, it's called the transfiguration in the Bible. And I think it's in Matthew and Mark, or Mark, I, I think it's in Mark. But I, that's the version that I read. And in that chapter, Jesus takes them up and when he takes them up during the transfiguration, now if you look at transfiguration, that's transformation, right? And what I'm hearing Elizabeth talk about is essentially that. There's, you can build the brand, but are you working on your personal brand that sustains the brand? So when Jesus gets up to the, to the mountaintop and he has Peter, James, and John with him, God descends as a cloud and Elijah and um, Moses are there. And they, Peter, James, and John drop, and they want to build a tabernacle. The leadership perspective that I saw from that was, how are you building the tabernacle so that the glory of God can descend, and your Peter, James, and John are there to intercede and be there with you? Mm -hmm. Because at that moment, he was given divine strategies. There was conversation that was had. He was talking to God, and the two men, Elijah called down the fire of God. And the same fire that Elijah, that, that Elijah called down when he killed the prophets of Baal, and when he basically turned, when he told, when he was taunting the prophets of Baal, and he said, "Oh, your God does this." He's like, "Let's pour water on these logs. Let's see if your God can light fire." And theirs couldn't. But he called down on scorched, like soaked wood, drenched wood, and lit fire. That same fire, that same fire, that Elijah called down is the same fire a few chapters back with Moses that met Moses in the burning bush. So who are your burning bush people? Who are your, um, who are, you, do you know what I'm saying? Like that is the establishment. That is the community. Those are the things that you're building. And the reason I say that, sis, is can you talk to us specifically about leadership branding and relationships and how that impacts your brand um so leadership and relationships you can't have leadership without relationships you can't right like what are you building your personal brand for it's for those relationships right so that they can trust you so that you can make credibility right so that they can see that you are authentic, that you are a leader, right? And so it's really hard for you to build relationships if you don't have a personal brand, right? Because your personal brand should stay consistent. And through that, through that consistency is how you build the relationship with people, right? And so, okay, you're leading, you have your personal brand, but who are you leading, like you're saying, right? Like we're, we are here to build relationships, right? Yes. And so this is why I am huge also about organic marketing. And when I talk about organic marketing, I'm not saying like you can't do ads. I'm not saying you can't boost your posts, right? But what I'm saying is that when you have learned to do the organic stuff, that is a stuff that is going to be sustainable. I'm outside, guys, sorry. <laughs> right no no you're fine those uh th those are the things that are going to be sustainable in your life is the things that you have built from the bottom all the way to the top yes right? because you can run an ad yeah you know you can target people that you don't know like like i'm faith-based right i know that god's going to send me the people that need to be here right? and the people that don't need to be here they don't have to be here so so for me that mentality of like oh my gosh i'm all about organic marketing and not about any paid ads uh that's not the case for me because i trust the vision that god has given me i trust that god's going to come through right but a lot of times we want the easy way out mm. right a lot of times we're afraid to build organically and to simplify organically um <clears throat> organically is when you you don't do any paid advertising you know you don't run ads none of that you don't buy your followers this is i know huge okay let me tell you i could tell when people buy their followers buying your followers does nothing for you 
It actually harms your algorithm. It harms your reputation, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So organic marketing means that you work through creating content, through doing live videos, through deeply communicating and connecting with your audience. That what, that's what organic marketing is. And this is why I also am always doing and promoting organic marketing, right? Because organic marketing is what's going to build your business to be successful and to be sustainable, right? It, it, yes. Explain to me, and I want to I want to give them a tool or a thought or something that they can, you know, kind of start researching. You know, we're all about the implementation here, right? Mm -hmm. Now you have a podcast. Mm -hmm. I have a podcast. Explain to them how you use podcasting as a form of organic marketing. Okay. Yeah. I think that would be a great tool so, that they can start <clears throat> learning about. Yeah. And I was going to ask you, if, are you on your computer, sis? No. On your, your phone? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, okay. I was going to say that if you can send, like tag me on your stories and then I'll tag myself about this page. That way they can kind of refer over here to this page. Oh, oh, oh I can. What do you mean? Which page? Like on my personal one yeah i'm gonna send it over here i'll do it right now okay perfect so um so podcasting right so when we focus on our doing doing organic marketing we also have to focus on how am i going to bring visibility how am i going to bring visibility because organic marketing it takes longer to build the visibility it takes longer for you to build an audience, right? So we have to think about, okay, I'm doing organic marketing, but how can I funnel people in mm -hmm. to follow me and really meet me at my main platform where I'm communicating, right? So we can so do like, for me, like podcasting, no camera, and we can do podcasting like on YouTube, mm -hmm. right? And so you're yeah. saying, how, how do we get them to off of social media into our community right yeah so the okay. way i see it is i funnel in people from my podcast to my instagram mm -hmm. right and this is where in your description in your podcast you're going to share your social media platforms right because you are going to uh, funnel them in to increase your visibility and to reach a wider net, right? That's the whole purpose of it, right? But also at the same time, your podcast is gonna give you credibility for people to listen to your leadership, to listen to who you are, how you speak, right? All of that matters, right? For example, me, I there's some leaders that I absolutely love the way they teach, but I cannot go on listening to them all day because of the way they speak right really what do you mean like if i if i if i can get a person who has very much a lot of wisdom but they speak very arrogant i can't listen to a podcast like that right mm. like that's me that's personal right that i can't i can't go on like listening to to people like that right because of their tone of voice or like the way they're speaking or anything like that, right? Yeah, yeah. But that's personal. They're, that's personal. So what I'm trying to say is people are going to listen to your tone. Yes. Uh, right? People are going to listen to your lifestyle, right? Like if you listen to my podcast, I'm drinking my tea. Sometimes I'm yawning on there, right? Because I want to give the image of my podcast is my lifestyle. So I share my personal experience. I share mm -hmm. my journey uh -huh. on there. I am vulnerable on there. You guys have heard me cry on my podcast, right? Because my mission is to help leaders, entrepreneurs, and people who are called to fulfill their calling. And when you're fulfilling your calling, hey, your calling is sometimes going to look like you doing a podcast at 4 o'clock in the morning crying. Like, like that's what it is. Mm -hmm. That's what leadership uh -huh. is. If, if you think that leadership is... It's Glitz perfect. and glam, you got another no. thing coming. When you step into leadership, you suffer. It hurts, right? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm saying, you know, it, it carries a heavy weight, right? 
And so your podcast is going to give you your cred the credibility that you need, right? It's going to funnel people into your, um, into your social media platforms, right? It's going to also show the authority that you have, right? So it continues to build your brand, right? It's, it, it's a way to show people now, why is podcasting youtube and all of that because those are search engines right people go on there to search great point yeah people go on there to search right how to brand like a boss or how to market organically and so you're saying to create content um how to start your t-shirt company with less than a hundred dollar budget and you create a video about doing it, mm -hmm. right yeah. So people, whenever they go on a search engine like Google, YouTube, podcasting, anything like that, they're really going because they're looking for something. Right. And so whenever you put yourself out on a on a search engine, right, you're really like, like increasing your net. Yeah. Uh, spreading yourself at, 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 a, at a wider net. Right. Um, and so it's like okay, I'm going to build my business on social media. Okay, I'm going to use Facebook. I'm going to use Instagram. But let me also repurpose my content and put it on a search engine to increase my visibility. Gotcha. Because right. we want to make an impact with our brand, right? And so that's my recommendation is that a lot of times your personal brand is really good. A lot of times your offers are really good, right? But a lot of times... You're, you need to increase your, your, your visibility. Like, how can I wrap up? How can I make myself more known? How can I step out of my comfort zone? And, That's why I'm doing all these lives. <laughs> yeah, and spread my leadership, grow as a leader. Like, this is part of growing as a leader, mm -hmm. right? And so, yeah, so that's it, sis. I love it. I love it. So let's, um, I want to wrap up cause I want to respect everyone's mornings and the things like that. But I think we've given a lot of people good, good meat to kind of look and see how am I going to get out there organically? What is, you know, basically branding versus like business branding versus personal branding, but also the leadership mentality of, um, that whole Nehemiah perspective of, you're building, yes, and you're called to build. You're called to be an entrepreneur. You're called to be a leader. But are we? Do, what are we doing? Not are we, but what are right? Like not questioning, are we doing this? But really looking at the perspective, like ourselves in that that position of a leader, and saying, "Am I doing more for the business, or am I doing more of the?" I don't want to say personal development because you know how that kind of gives that whole like worldly perspective, but the, the inner work, like, are, are you still building the brand with God? Are you still seeking his face? Are you still maturing spiritually? Because the more that the business grows, um, the more people that you're serving, there comes more warfare. There comes more intercession because you're essentially interceding and serving and helping people. And so you might be thinking, oh, I'm going to be serving a thousand people or I'm going to be, you know, a lot of times people look at businesses as like money. And I have really come away from that perspective and I've looked at it in the perspective of these are people that are coming to Well Valley or Bach Lady Empire Academy, right? And they are looking for a tangible result that they have seen from our organic marketing. How am I serving not just them, but their family? Because you think of that person, whatever you pour into someone, that is going to go into their family. It's if you're a parenting coach or you're a money coach or like finances, right? Yeah. So maybe you work with single moms or maybe you work with um, single family homes, right? Dads that are single parents or however, what you're doing, if you're serving the dollar, then you're going to get a dollar. But if you're serving the impact that you're going to make on the person's generation, I'm getting feedback. I don't know why on your phone, I think. But 
are you serve if you're if you're looking at the person as generations and generations do you see what I'm saying? Like, how are you being the leader to impact that aspiring leader who's a wife, who's a mom, who's a ministry leader, who's a daughter, who's a friend, who's a sister, who's an aunt, who's a cousin, you know, all of these things. That's an impact, right? Where you can be a light in a dark place for this person to rise up and go and do what they're going to do. Yeah. Elizabeth, um, can you talk to them about June 20th and why we're doing these, the seminar and why we collabed? Yeah, so on June 20th, um, my girl right here, Angelica, we are going to be doing um, publishing, right? What is it called, Angelica? It's the Prep to Publish. Uh, so we're, yeah, it's, well, it's Prep to Publish, but we're hosting the, the Builders Roadmap Seminar, but it's virtual. And essentially, we're going to be unpacking the basic principles of branding and self-publishing. Now, explain to them why we're focusing on that, branding and self-publishing. So we're focusing on um, branding and self-publishing because there's a very important aspect of creating your foundation. And this is a topic that we've, me and Angelica have just, we've talked a lot about it. Um, establishing your foundation, right, which is your personal brand prior to publishing, right? And so um, I want to kind of talk to it in the talk about it in the most um, how can I, uh, simple, Be real. Be real. humble <laughs> way that, you know, uh, self-publishing is something that we see a lot, right? Mm -hmm. Like we see it we see it a lot. We see people collaborating, kingdom entrepreneurs, right? And I love the fact that people are collaborating, you know, yeah. co collaborating and writing their books, right? But before, right, and this goes with even if you're creating your offer, right? Sometimes we want to wait and say, okay, I'm going to write my book, I'm going to create my offer, I'm going to create my program, I'm going to create my course, and then this is what's going to get me out there and give, give me my personal brand. And it doesn't work that way, right? It doesn't work that way. People think, often think that because they have a book or because they have a tangible or because they have a an course offer, or yeah, something, whatever it is, um, they feel like, okay, because I have this, this is my personal brand, right? And that's actually not the appropriate way to do it, right? Because when we end up creating our course or we end up writing our book, right, we end up finding out that, of course, who are the first people that are going to be buying your book? Friends and family. We would hope, right? Yeah, we would hope. <laughs> we would hope, right? A lot of times they don't go that way, but we ain't going to go into that and judge, right? <laughs> but once we have friends and family that they buy the book, they buy the course, what's next? And oftentimes we see that a lot of kingdom entrepreneurs, um, they get stuck, right? They get stuck and they say, okay, well, you know, and, and so this is where the devil comes and he lies to you of saying, okay, your book ain't good enough. You know, um, whatever you wrote is not good enough. You know, this was never something that God gave you. We start to get all confused, right? And we start to doubt, okay, God, you gave me this vision to write this book, but now people aren't buying. Was I not listening to your voice? Was I disobedient? Like, was I mixed up or whatever? Because we don't see the, the success. We don't see the results of people buying our book or our offer, whatever it is, right? And it's not that a lot of times your book is not successful because it's not good enough or because you didn't listen to the voice of God. It's just that you did not build your foundation, right? To build that authority, to build that credibility, to build that audience prior to writing your book right? So personal branding is going to prepare your audience to buy, right? It's going to prepare your audience to buy, right? And this is like the same when you launch an offer, right? When you launch an offer, what do you do when you, before you launch the offer? You prep your audience, right? You talk about it, you create content about it, you talk about, okay, this is what this masterclass is going to talk about, you break it down, right? We, me and Shanice, right? We talked about creating content for one of her offers, and it's simple, 
right what modules what courses yes does your offer give right okay well we're gonna and what results what transformation mm -hmm. yeah we're gonna be talking about the steps to healing okay well talk about okay. it on your content what does that look like why is it important to heal what are the steps right you're giving bits of pieces right of okay these are the steps we're going to take to heal but now you can break it down in your content right and so before she launches this offer before we launch our book we start to prepare people and this starts to build the anticipation right and, and stay so in that lane staying yeah. in that lane of just because like, like there's when you're building all the ideas come in and we want to build and that's fine i get it mm -hmm. but being able to nurture that freebie that will build your community that will authentically serve so that when you have an organic community when you go to launch a t-shirt a book an ebook a course right sis mm -hmm. they're they're not just buying it because it's a book they're buying it because it's a missing piece that you've been helping them prepare to go through a healing process. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I mean? Like you're you're leading them without even them knowing that you're leading them, right? Yeah, and and if you know, and if people buy your book just to support you, they probably aren't going to read it, right? <laughs> they they're not going to read it. Right. If people don't know you, they don't know your story. They don't know who you are at your core. Okay. This is what personal branding is, is who are you at your core? Right. Like, or if your book, book, if your cover of, if the cover of your book doesn't match who you are in person, like when somebody reads the book and you're claiming certain things, but then when they meet you, do you, do you know what I mean? Like there's, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways mm -hmm. yeah. and i, I think this is i think this is where i think this is where personal branding and leadership they, they come into play mm -hmm. this is a scary uh -huh. part of your accountability of saying this is who, who i am and this is how i'm going to walk it out amen right this is where the accountability comes into play right and, and this is where people feel the heaviness of like coming into my program because this my personal branding program is called take the lead right mm -hmm. and this is where it gets really heavy where people say oh my gosh like there are huge expectations for me mm -hmm. right because through these very in-depth questions we start to ask and those in-depth questions start to make you uncomfortable because you're afraid of that accountability you're afraid of that commitment because once you figure out your personal brand and you peel off those layers, trust me, you will not be able to sleep. Yeah. Because that is a moment in your life that God meets you and says, look at the responsibility you have. And it comes through personal branding. It really does come through personal branding. When I started to create my personal brand, I felt incompetent as I was building my personal brand mm -hmm. because I was like, like God, like you're you're unlayering all these things, and I don't know if I can do this. So you communicate your personal brand, but guess what? Now it's time to walk it out on your social media. Now it's time to walk it out on your stories. Now it's time to walk it out at your events. Now it's time to walk it out when nobody's watching you, right? And that's where it gets heavy. integrity the integrity of your brand are you who you say you are and on all areas yeah right on all, all areas are and you, who you yeah and that's part of your identity and let me tell you that as a leader i can say out of experience if you call being called into leadership as a kingdom entrepreneur which i pray to god that uh, you understand that you you have that responsibility right um the the biggest thing that the enemy is going to attack is going to be your identity 
is going to be your reputation. It's going to be your testimony because he knows that when your identity is distorted, right? In the way that you act in your behavior and the way that you lead people, you lose that credibility. And this is where a lot of times we start to feel incompetent, right? The enemy will start to put this mentality of, oh, you're not competent. Oh, you know, you don't say who you say, you don't, you're not who you say you are, right? Sometimes, and you start and, assuming that identity, the lie, and it messes yeah, and up so, your whole brand. That's how the enemy comes to mess up your brand. You start to get distorted, right? Mm -hmm, your mm -hmm. identity starts to get distorted. And then this is where you have to come back and you're like, this is who I am, right? And so this of uh, being a leader, building your brand, your testimony, staying focused is really a walk that requires a lot of focus, mm -hmm. that requires a lot of accountability, right? Um, but it's a beautiful experience because through your personal brand, you start to really see, wow, like, like I like who I'm becoming i like who god is is how he's shaping me and how he's turning me into a leader right and and, and that is fulfilling to see how god is turning you into a leader and now you're experiencing it through your personal brand i love it love it i want to take questions i know this went longer than we expected but it's beautiful thank you for being here i think it's amazing to see um just the impact of like that you have in just being your authentic self, right? And um, really truly walking out that, you know, leadership is about when you go do something, it's not necessarily, hey, come follow me. It's leading in a sense that, hey, what is she doing? Hey, that's strange. I kind of like that. I want to I wanna know more about that. Mm -hmm. Like, you know when like that's the joke of like the, um everyone's in a building and a fire breaks out and there's some people that want to go figure out what the fire is and there's other people that are out of the fire you know they're, they're gone they're like i don't need to know what i don't need to know who started the fire i don't need all i know is that fire burns and i gotta get out right <laughs> like sometimes we have to decide are we going to like what type of leader are we going to be right and how are we leading are we leading people to the transformation are we leading people to safety right are we leading people to a new way of life i say that because um in closing i, I want to leave people with three things that i think is going to um really bless them if you're questioning we're going to take some questions she says not a question, but a comment. Liz has been such a blessing to my life in this season. Oh, thank you for your lady. Oh, for your boldness and love for others. Yes, God bless you, Allie. I, I love you. That is so beautiful. Thank you. That's what I mean. Like, I love the authenticity. And people, as a leader, nobody needs to know your business unless you tell them. And as, behind, as a leader behind the scenes, we do so much behind the scenes that it's not advertised on social media. Because there's, you never, like, you, you're authentically, let me, let me say this. I'm sure Elizabeth has done certain things her entire life, as far as been a sister, as far as been a leader, as far as been a friend, and all of these things that we didn't really know what was what, right? And then she had that revelation in the car, like, personal branding, personal branding. Well, what is that? Because personal branding is essentially done behind in the secret place mm -hmm. and so you really need someone like elizabeth a peter or james and a john to go behind the scenes with you when the lord is rebuking you when he's correcting you when he's chastising you when you're going through warfare when you're going through certain things leadership is not just what you see you know quote unquote at the pulpit with a microphone telling you to get your blessing no Leadership is behind the scenes doing the ministry work of um, this person needed food, this person needed clothing, this person needed shelter, this person needed a hug, this person needed intercession, this person just needed someone to listen to them. 
this person needed you know water a cold cool glass of water you know and so i share that because those behind the scenes things if you think that what you're not what you're doing now is not making an impact you have to remember like a slingshot okay god pulls you back 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 behind the scenes back 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 and you're thinking nobody's around that everyone's over there but he's pulling you back and he's pulling you back and he's pulling you back and as you're doing that and you're working on your personal brand you're getting the ideas you're you're getting the inner healing you're getting the deliverance that god is calling you to and he's pulling you back he's pulling you back and at his appointed time his appointed time he's going to release you and here you thought this is where you wanted to be but leaders get catapulted because those that are last shall be first and those that are first shall be last we have to allow the do the work so that he can catapult you behind you don't keep you and then he releases you and you go where the people that think they're leaders mm -hmm. aren't able to face those gatekeepers or those goliaths mm -hmm. they're not able because they don't have the oil they don't have the stamina they don't have their identity in christ when david went and faced goliath he didn't go up to him and you know question who he was he said who is this uncircumcised philistine talking about my god because he had already fought lions and tigers and bears on my behind the scenes what have you been fighting behind the scenes that is cultivating the fire in you right that when the lord re releases you into the appointed time and space you look back and realize man i've been leading this whole time yeah amen yeah and it, it's like i said it's such a big responsibility how how we lead that's why in this last workshop that we did so excited that shanice right she's on here if y'all see shanice's name go follow yeah. her right because and i know you're trying to end this but this is so good no 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 i don't know I'm, I'm good go ahead but um this is why it is so important to build your personal brand and lead from a place of healing yes because it doesn't matter like I, like just like you're building your personal brand all your life especially as kingdom entrepreneurs right like we know since we were kids are, especially if we've got some pastor's kids in the house, right? That since you're little, you carry that of like, hey, watch what you're, how you speak. Hey, watch how you're, you're dressing. Hey, watch how you position. People are watching like, you. Mm -hmm. We are taught that since we are little, right? That's how I grew up, right? Like my legs had better been crossed when I was sitting down, like all the little details, right? So, we build our personal brands, our testimony, our reputation since we're small, but also at the same time we influence, right? Mm. We influence. So everybody in this life influences in a specific area of your life. You have, and we have the responsibility of choosing how am I going to influence, right? Because when we say that we are believers, but we, our behavior starts, to show a different thing then this is where everybody starts to get confused right because now they see you as a leader but now they're like okay well if she's doing that and i trust her then this is probably not bad because she's a leader and i just i trust because i've been following her i've been seeing her the way that she that she acts and the way that she speaks and everything and so you know if she's doing it it's probably not that bad that that's that's a dangerous place to be because we will be accountable false reality for false reality that we say for the things that we do as a leader like i know that whenever i i meet god you know i want to be proud of my fruits i want, want to be proud of the reproduction that i've done i mm -hmm. want to be proud of it right i don't want to mislead people right so healing from a uh, leading from a place of healing is so important but it doesn't necessarily mean that you cannot lead right this is where authenticity comes into mm -hmm. play that a lot of times we stay stagnant and we stay stuck right because we're afraid to be vulnerable and to say 
I'm going through this hardship right now. Mm. Um, I'm going through, I'm going through this right now. It's just really hard for me. Right. But instead, because we try to be perfect leaders, we try to build our personal brand, right? We have all these mixed emotions that are giving all these mixed messages when instead we can say, you know what? I'm having issues right now. Mm -hmm. I'm having issues right now. Oh, no. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. And because you are building organically and because people are seeing you, people are going to respect that. People are going to give you space. People are going to support you because you have built that. Y'all don't even know how many times I have felt so discouraged, how many times I have felt so sad. Sometimes I, I'm like, God, I don't know if I can do this. I doubt myself. I doubt my competency sometimes, right? And, and a person will come on and you guys can go, if you guys go to my normal page, right? Um, on my highlights, it says there's like a client love or just like a love section, right? Where I screenshot, right? And I'm not showing off, right? Like my leadership it's is not fluffy. Authentically, I am yeah. not one to manipulate people to build credibility. That's also a big thing, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be buying people stuff and supporting. So people know if I support, it's because I want to support. Mm -hmm. If I give it's because i want to give Amen. i don't manipulate my leadership i don't manipulate my personal brand right but mm -hmm. if you guys go to that section you guys will see how many times people have messaged me out of nowhere to encourage me mm. right and so being vulnerable and being able to experience how much people and i don't have a big audience but i could guarantee that the people that i have they're there because they see my vulnerability because they want to be there because they know that even if they don't buy my programs even if i don't coach them i'm still there because my job is to love people regardless if they buy or if they don't buy yes that's what i mean the person not right? the dollar mm -hmm. yeah so so you know leading from a place of healing if you are thinking okay i want to publish my book i want to build my personal brand but I have some stuff, I have some baggage, right, that I'm carrying that is so heavy, that is making me feel incompetent, that is making me feel like I'm not good enough, that is like, you know, mentally like driving me crazy, like, God, I know you're calling me to do this, but this is holding me back. Like, connect with Shanice. Start working on your healing. Start working on your personal brand. Say who you are. You know, like- She actually just launched her program. She just launched her mini program. It's, um bloom her and it's grow up for the glow up and it's all wow. about like do the inner healing grow up with like like the spiritual maturity like it's okay like there's a lot of things and i loved her perspective when she said this because she's like and this was from the last event or that we did she said many of us have been hurt by so much trauma that you know, let's say you were three years old or you were four years old or seven years old or 10 years old or 12 years old or 16 years old, wherever that trauma is and it wasn't addressed, you stay stuck there emotionally, spiritually. And so here you are, like I can look back and, and I agree with Sister Shanice and what she was saying because my journey of coming out of because i went to school to be a mental health clinical mental health counselor i was counseling people i was doing things and a lot of my like my supervisors didn't like because i was receiving quote unquote medicaid clients and after 90 days they wouldn't come back mm -hmm. and they they started to question me saying well what's wrong with you how come you're not because they were making money See, they make money, but on my treatment plans and what I was doing, I was working at a Christian based facility. Well, after 90 days, I mean, if there ain't, I mean, you know what I mean? Like you yeah. should come back for maintenance or for a check-in. But when you literally truly help people, like when I say, I believe in the transformation of the word of God, mm -hmm. I believe what it says. And so what Shanice is so amazing at is taking that, helping you identify that gap of childhood trauma that's keeping you stuck and allowing you to spiritually develop through the word of God so that you can grow and mature and receive the glow up that the Lord is trying to give you. 
that he wants you to spiritually mature. So it's leading from the power of your testimony so that you're able to lead at, like Sister Elizabeth says, at full capacity. Yeah. We have to be able to lead at full capacity. Yeah. And I, and I think a lot of times we, we, like the enemy will keep us stuck, right? Mm -hmm. Like when I was going through that oppression, depression, it was horrible. And I, there was a day that I literally, I couldn't get up and I was like, oh my gosh, why am I alive today? And I come to my makeup room mm -hmm. and I felt this urgency that I'm like, what is happening? You know, like what is happening? Like why full capacity, right? I talk about that. If you go all the way back to my content, right? When I was going through through that th those moments, I wanted to lead at full capacity, right? So these mental blocks and all of this, they're just they just hinder you for you not to go at full capacity, right? Because you have great potential. You do have great potential, mm -hmm. right? But right, what the enemy wants is to keep you stuck so that you don't go at full capacity because he knows the impact that you can make, right? So there has has to be a point in your life that you say, I'm going to be responsible for my personal growth, my personal development. Amen. I'm going to face, face my demons. You got to face the, the demons and you have to cast them out. Literally. Yeah. Up and, and out. And that day I, I sat down and I literally had a, a conversation with the Holy Spirit. Y'all don't even know my conversations. Like I get real okay. deep and I'm just like, you, I basically told him, you are my counselor. You are so counselor here to help me out of this. <laughs> yeah. So I need you to tell me what the heck is going on. Left, right, up, down, side, side. Like, what yeah, are we doing like, here? Like, I need to get out of this. <laughs> like, we don't have to be stuck in our heads. We don't have to be stuck in and being oppressed and feeling shameful and feeling incompetent. Like. We the only reason why he does that is because he's afraid of the movement that is inside of you. He's afraid of the movement. And I'm not talking about like how the world says a movement and you get a bunch of people and they don't even know what they're doing themselves. I'm talking about the movement, the same, the same movement that you do in the secret place, mm -hmm. the same movement that you do in the secret place is the same movement that will make an impact in the natural. If you're not moving anything in the secret place, now I'm not saying it's going to happen overnight because God, God's not a genie. What I'm saying is being a part of your personal brand, showing up, learning certain things, doing the inner healing, getting connected with Sister Shanice, going, following Sister Elizabeth as well on her leadership page and looking at, and I put the links and all that stuff in there, The but getting getting connected in a sense, what's on your feed? There is so much content that between us three that we put out that if you see, you know, at first when you open your phone and you say, God's calling me to do something, if you're not seeing leaders or people that are putting out free content organically to help you do better, you're wasting your time. You're wasting your time, truly. Because... You have to remember that people that are coming on Instagram, and this is the reason why I want to share this with you, because people that are coming on Instagram, it is, it is, there's three types of content. I don't know why I'm talking about this, but there's three types of content that I always encourage my clients to work through. Okay. The three types of com content is it's basically edutainment. It's education, inspirational and empowerment. Okay. What are you get? How are you encouraging them? How are you? How are you emp empowering them? How are you like telling them? Sometimes, and Sister Elizabeth does an amazing job. She did this one video where she was in her car, and the guy and the audio was speaking, and she was sitting there just having a moment because that was her authentic self. People are coming to Instagram to be uplifted, encouraged, motivated. They are coming to, they don't want to fake, their reality is already a mess, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. they're looking for an escape. Why not create valuable content 
that is not going to numb their escape right because we get those trolls and people are making huge followers and money and all of these things and it's literally sending them into a deeper depression right why not create and start creating and learning this is the first thing i want to leave you with with organic marketing but also branding like a boss with elizabeth and all of these different things i want you to find a social media platform that you want to learn everything you can about because that is going to be the platform that you choose to go forth on and give free content i personally use instagram now, the reason I use Instagram is because my Instagram is connected to my business Facebook page and I can sh and it shares for me. I don't have to use a special app. I don't have to do any other overhead business stuff. My brain kind of works like tech wise. Right. So I'm sharing this with you because learn social media, learn it. OK, I actually have if you guys DM me, I have you just put Instagram and I will send you a free guide a free guide of Instagram marketing. So you can learn the basics, learn what's available and ask questions. And you can even jump in the DMs with Sister Elizabeth. She will, we will help you. We will help you learn and, and, and really be that guidance that you need to not focus so much on the business brand, but focus on you as the brand you yeah. as who god is who is god say you are and are you doing as god says do you see what i'm saying are you leading with an impact amen amen so find a social media platform that you like research it because that is going to be and i highlighted an organic marketing roadmap that is actually one of the things i'm going to be talking about next week on thursdays i go live every morning and this was a bonus with elizabeth so thank you for coming and all of this, Liz. I, I'm so grateful. God is good. And I'm going to be talking about three things next week. I'm going to be talking about social media, your freebie, and building your community. Okay? And what that can look like. Free. 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 You don't even have to, like, I'll. we have free resources, all of that. If you have any questions about how to get started, you can DM Elizabeth or myself, and we'll be happy to get you plugged in and get started, okay? Sounds Do you have any questions or anything, Elizabeth? No. Nope. you want to leave them with yeah. anything? Anybody else have questions? I'm free to answer them. If not, I think we're good. Amen. Yeah. All righty, y'all. We'll see you soon. We're going to have to do this again. Okay. Let me know. Bye. Bye. Love, Bye. Love you. See you. Bye.